It's the ultimate fitness showdown. In one corner, we have the long-reigning champion of longevity, the treadmill, the bike, the long run, good old cardiovascular exercise. And in the other corner, the challenger, gaining some serious momentum and backed by a wave of new science, the weight rack, the kettlebell, the deadlift, resistance training. For decades, we've been told that cardio is the key to a long life. But what if the secret to not just living longer, but living stronger, is actually found in the weight room? You have limited time. You want the biggest bang for your buck for a longer, healthier life. So which one should you choose? A flood of new research is challenging everything we thought we knew. In this video, we're digging into the latest science to definitively answer the question. When it comes to extending your life, is it resistance training or cardio that really comes out on top? The science is in, and the answer is probably not what you think. The case for cardio, the engine of longevity. First things first, we have to pay our respects to the reigning champ. There is an absolute mountain of evidence showing that cardio is one of the most powerful things you can do to live longer. The main way it does this is by slashing what scientists call all-cause mortality, which is just your risk of dying from any cause. When you do regular aerobic exercise like jogging, swimming, or cycling, you're literally training your body's engine, your heart, your lungs, and your blood vessels. The key metric here is cardiorespiratory fitness, or CRF, which is best measured by something called VO2 max. You can think of VO2 max as the maximum amount of oxygen your body can use during intense exercise. It's a direct measure of how powerful and efficient your engine is. And the science on this is crystal clear. A higher VO2 max is one of the single best predictors of a long life. A groundbreaking study in the journal JAMA revealed that people with the highest levels of cardiorespiratory fitness had an incredible 80% reduction in mortality risk compared to those with the lowest fitness. The link is so direct that even small improvements have a huge impact. Research published in the British Journal of Sports Medicine, which analyzed over 20 million data points, found that for every small jump in your cardio fitness, your risk of dying from any cause drops by 11 to 17 percent. To put it another way, longevity expert Dr. Peter Atia often points out that just moving from a low VO2 max for your age and sex to below average is linked to a 50 percent drop in all-cause mortality. That's a return on investment that no pill on the market can claim. The American Heart Association agrees, noting that hitting the basic guideline of 150 minutes of moderate activity per week can lower your risk of death by up to 21%. The takeaway is undeniable. A strong cardiovascular system is non-negotiable for longevity. It's the ticket to playing the long game. So, case closed, right? We should all just stick to running and call it a day? Well, not so fast. The case for resistance training, the armor of health span. While cardio is busy extending the length of your life, a growing pile of evidence suggests resistance training is what determines the quality of that life. This is the crucial difference between lifespan and health span. Lifespan is just how many years you live. Health span is how many of those years you spend feeling healthy, vibrant, and capable. And this is where the challenger, resistance training, really makes its case. As we get older, we all face a silent enemy, sarcopenia. It's the age-related loss of muscle, strength, and function. After you turn 30, you can lose 3-8% to 8 of your muscle mass every decade, and that rate speeds up after 60. This isn't just about how you look. Losing muscle is a primary driver of becoming frail, falling, and losing your independence. This is exactly why so much longevity research is now focused on muscle. Muscle is your metabolic armor. It's the biggest place in your body for glucose disposal, meaning strong muscles act like a metabolic sink, soaking up blood sugar and helping protect you from insulin resistance and type 2 diabetes. The data on strength as a predictor of how long you'll live is just as stunning as the data for cardio. Huge studies have confirmed that something as simple as grip strength is shockingly accurate as a predictor of all-cause mortality, sometimes even more accurate than blood pressure. A landmark study in The Lancet found that every 5 kilogram drop in grip strength, there was a 16% jump in the risk of dying from any cause. Your handshake, it turns out, says a lot about how robust you are. So what happens when you fight back with resistance training? A major meta-analysis found that regular strength training is associated with about a 15% lower risk of all-cause mortality. But here's the fascinating part. Another meta-analysis found the perfect dose. 
The biggest risk reduction, an impressive 27%, was seen at around 60 minutes of resistance training per week. After that, the benefits seem to level off, suggesting it's a powerful but very time-efficient habit. Resistance training is what lets you climb stairs without getting winded, carry your own groceries, play with your grandkids, and get yourself up off the floor in your 80s and 90s. It's your defense against frailty. It builds not just muscle, but bone density, protecting you from devastating fractures. It armors your body for the long haul. So we've made a powerful case for cardio and equally powerful case for strength. One seems to add years to your life. The other adds life to your years. In a moment, we're going to put them head to head with the very latest science and declare a winner. But first, if you're finding this evidence-based breakdown helpful, do me a favor and hit that like button. It's a small click for you, but it tells the YouTube algorithm that this kind of health content is important, and it really does help support the channel. The twist. It's not a competition. All right, so we've got cardio for your engine and weights for your armor. One extends lifespan, the other fortifies health span. So who wins the showdown? The definitive answer is this, you've been tricked into asking the wrong question. The versus debate is a false choice. This isn't a competition, it's a partnership. Framing it as resistance training versus cardio is like asking if the engine or the chassis is more important for a car. You absolutely need both to get anywhere. They don't compete, they complete each other. Think of it this way. Excellent cardio fitness is like being able to outrun the Grim Reaper. You're metabolically healthy, your heart is strong, and you can delay his arrival for years, even decades. But eventually, he's going to catch up. Having solid muscle mass and strength from resistance training is what allows you, when he finally taps you on the shoulder, to turn around, look him in the eye, and make him profoundly uncomfortable. Cardio helps solve the problem of heart disease, which is a leading cause of death. Resistance training helps solve the problem of physical decline and frailty, which is a leading cause of death and disability in older adults. A recent study from Iowa State University shows this synergy perfectly. It found that a workout plan split 50-50 between cardio and weights reduced cardiovascular risk just as much as a cardio-only plan. But the combo group got a huge bonus, all the benefits of stronger muscles and better function that the cardio-only group completely missed out on. They don't cancel each other out, their effects add up. The definitive answer and the optimal protocol. So the winner of the showdown isn't one or the other. The undisputed, undefeated champion of longevity is the combination. The science could not be clearer on this. Let's look at the final numbers. We saw that aerobic activity alone was linked to about a 21% lower risk of dying from any cause. Resistance training alone was associated with about a 15% lower risk. But what happens when you put them together? A massive meta-analysis found that combining the two was linked to a stunning 40% lower risk of all-cause mortality. That is a colossal effect. People who did both types of exercise consistently had a dramatically lower risk of dying than people who only did one or were inactive. So what does this look like in the real world? The beauty is that the evidence-based plan is simple and achievable. Based on the current science, here is your longevity prescription. Cardiovascular exercise. Aim for a minimum of 150 minutes of moderate intensity cardio per week. The gold standard here is zone 2 training. This is a level of effort where you're breathing heavier, but you could still hold a conversation. Think of a brisk walk on an incline, a steady jog, or cycling while still being able to chat with a friend. This builds your aerobic base, which is the foundation of a high VO2 max. You can throw in one shorter high-intensity session each week to really push that top-end fitness. Resistance training aim for two to three total body sessions per week, with the sweet spot for mortality reduction being right around 60 minutes of total training time for the week. The goal isn't to become a professional bodybuilder, it's to send a powerful signal to your body to build and maintain muscle and bone. Focus on big compound movements that use multiple muscle groups. Think squats, deadlifts or hip hinges, push-ups and rows. This hybrid approach is the most powerful longevity medicine that we know of. We started this with a showdown, weights versus the treadmill. We looked at the science and saw they have powerful but different benefits. Cardio builds your engine for a long life. Strength training builds your armor for a healthy life. And in the end, the evidence delivered a clear verdict. The ultimate winner isn't a single champion, but a team. Don't choose between being able to run from the Grim Reaper or being strong enough to fight him. Do both. 
That is the scientifically backed path to not just a longer life, but a better, stronger, and more vibrant one. What does your weekly routine look like? Are you team cardio, team strength, or team hybrid? Let me know down in the comments. And if you found this deep dive into the science of longevity helpful, make sure you subscribe and turn on notifications so you never miss another evidence-based guide to leveling up your health.